So let's get started. Uh, welcome. We're, we, every year we do a little capstone orientation. Uh, it can be slightly confusing, uh, especially since we started them, but I think some institutional knowledge is being built in. So, But regardless, uh, we thought we would have this orientation both to just kind of clarify the main objectives of the capstone, have some student uh, responses to what a capstone really is. Thanks for coming. Uh, and then also a chance for the people who are offering capstones to talk a little bit about what they're going to be offering so you have a chance to look around and ask questions, follow up, okay? All right, so uh, so the main, the main uh, <coughs> purpose of the capstone course, it's really the culmination of your curriculum, right? Uh, you take all your basic coursework, then comes the capstone, and now you integrate across those capstone, those core courses uh, by applying that knowledge to some kind of uh, applied problem. And that's, that's the main component of it. It's, your, it's the culmination, so naturally it's going to be a little bit more work. Uh, but, uh, so that's the purpose it serves in the curriculum, but you should also think of it as sort of a carrying card, uh, a good thing that you can give to future employers or to hone your own expertise in a particular subject area. So that's the main goal of it. Uh, and the second goal, uh, and this is why it might be confusing to people, for the MA students, uh, it serves as our university's exit requirement. So MAs have to take some kind of exit requirement. And so we decided to fold that requirement into this course uh, so that uh, typically a midterm assessment is given. It's about 30% of your grade. So the course also serves that function, but primarily it's Again, the culmination of your of your of your program here. So I don't think I have too much more else to say here. There's a variety of capstones, and shortly we'll this website here uh, can give you access to previous capstones. So you can get an idea of it. You can look through those, um, <coughs> and uh, you know we have typical individual research papers, which Charlotte and Rob are going to talk about, and then we have two. Uh, subject areas which Noah and Mary will, will talk about. Uh, but that's enough for me. My goal is to make sure you're clear about the goals of the, of the capstone. Uh, but maybe some students can tell you what it's really about or really how to prepare. So I, Julie and Eric. Uh, I'm currently in capstone right now. Um, so just a little bit about me. I'm a dual degree master's student between civil engineering and uh, public administration. And um, Capstone is really useful, I think, if you are a dual degree student, you can kind of line up your research interests with your, your other degree. Um, and also, if, there, if there's just a topic you're really interested in, I think the Individual Research Capstone is a really good choice, because you can explore that more in depth. Um, if you've already explored that topic in some other classes, like legal environment, um, you can also kind of continue to focus on that topic. Eric Metcalf, dual. Uh, Environmental Natural Resources, and then over here in MA and Career Program. I know a lot of you. Uh, big takeaway, Dr. Lane's work sending 900 this semester. I'll uh, work through it. I guess we talked about it last class, but Julie and I were sort of on the same page with things we're prepared for. Uh, I know a lot of you have already taken program evaluation, but carrying a topic forward, I know a lot of us bounce around because so we have so many different interest areas. But if you can carry a topic forward from program evaluation or one of your other courses, particular a topic that has the data, uh, do not come to this course thinking you might have access to data. Make sure you have data in hand, not someone's going to provide you with data at a certain date. Sam, <laughs> I know you went through a program evaluation. But uh, we've had so much situations like that, but having data in hand from some sort of, and then it also helps. I know in my particular case, I have a customer that I'm actually providing a deliverable to, so that has a real world context to it. Uh, so at the end of the semester, I'll present to uh, how Division of Wildlife, uh, what my findings were with my particular study. So uh, the data was a big thing, carrying the topic forward uh, from a previous class, which I know at least Dr. Landberg has encouraged. I know Dr. Cook from several has had him encourage us carrying that idea forward. With that same note, all your literature reviews and everything like that, try to compile all that ahead of time if you can or find it convenient to. Uh, that way you can refer back to it and have some sort of idea as you're going into it. If you read the uh, course requirements, I know in the middle of summer, uh, by July, sometime in July, we had to, we had to provide a short literature review or reading list uh, where we're getting our data from and uh, proposed research questions. So just think about that too. If you're 
are taking it in the fall or spring are going to be a part of the, <coughs> part of the start is multiple kinds of capstones and so they're talking about the individual capstone where you do an individual research paper right uh, so uh, uh, Charlotte and Rob will talk about those shortly those might be a little bit different than what uh, Mary and Noah are going to talk about but, uh, but <coughs> again I think what you've heard from them is have some of these ideas ahead of time so you can get your data your ideas done ahead of time so once you hit the semester, you can get going. And I think that's probably going to be the takeaway here. Now, one other point, too, is when you're working through the paper, it's set up, or at least for the individual paper, it's set up for each week as an incremental step. So you're building on your paper the entire semester. So don't think that you're going to be, all of a sudden, get towards the end of the semester and you got to crank out a, a pretty extensive paper. It's, it builds on itself and it gets great and you get peer feedback. So it makes it a little bit more palatable and bearable if you're taking other coursework at the same time. I'm just curious because it sounds like so much of this is individual and outside of class. I'm just kind of wondering what takes place in class. If you're working on other material or if you're just kind of consulting on your paper along the way. Um, so each week we'll look at some previous examples of individual research capstones and then we'll have some discussion about um, what those papers did well, what they didn't do well, um, just kind of how to approach a literature review or how to uh, you know, write about um, your, your data in a, a way that's clear. Um, so that'll be the first portion of class, and then we'll work with our peer groups. So we're broken into groups of three, and uh, we'll review each other's previous week's work and provide some feedback and ways to make <coughs> improvements. And that's a really valuable process to get some editing along the way. Um, so I think. And the professor, uh, Dr. Landsberg, and the TA have been more than available because it's a small, there's only yeah. nine people, I think, in our class. So once you break out your peer groups, they walk around, so feedback is. And we've, we've done this, I guess, one, one time before, kind of team teaching it. So we're, we're really good at interrupting one another. It is a little bit of a show. Yes. <laughs> so one fast, so literally, we're, like I was saying, we're here to help you write your paper. And there, there's no one way to do something, which is one of the reasons why it's really fun to have two people yeah. teaching the class together, because you're going to be getting feedback, not just from your group mates, your classmates, but from both of us. And sometimes we'll just with each other a little bit. A little bit. Um, and so, unlike the class that, that Mary and Noah are teaching, our lectures are going to be about writing a paper rather than providing lots of information about a particular topic. And so, you've already heard a lot about the process. You'll write lots of drafts of, of the papers. The main deliverables is that we're, we're going, they're scintillating lectures on things like introduction of literature reviews <laughs> and methods and data sections. And those will. You know how to write a title. Oh, yes. We, I like that one. That's a good well, you know, this is on tape, right? Yes. <laughs> um, and so the main deliverables, you'll be turning in the different paper sections. You'll be turning in multiple drafts of those sections. So you'll be getting feedback from your group mates. We're going to break you up into groups based on your topical interests, possibly the methods that you're using. And you'll get feedback from your classmates, and then you'll turn in a second draft where you'll get feedback from us. And then most well, typically, your third draft will be part of the final paper. And then all, along the way, as Professor Landsberg had mentioned, you'll have this midterm assessment. So you'll, by that point in the semester, you'll have done almost everything in the paper except for completing the analysis and the analysis. And then for all the capstones, you have a written deliverable. They'll differ a little bit among your classes. And then you'll also have some sort of presentation. Um, so, and you've already seen lots of this, um, you've heard the advice from your classmates, but those of you who are interested in doing the individual paper, and, these, and I would advise you, if you want to dig deeper into a topic and take this as an opportunity to either follow on a, a paper that you've done in another class, or dig deeper on maybe something you're working on at work, or an internship that you've done, this is your opportunity to do that. So, first thing you need to do if you want to do the independent version is to have a topic. And in a lot of regards, this is the hardest part, is having a researchable topic and coming up with some research questions. So as part of that process, what you should be doing now is reading a lot about that topic. And keep in mind, as you're reading other papers, think about what data they're using, what questions they're asking, what are the interesting questions, what interesting questions are they addressing in their papers. 
and start thinking about, well, you know, what, what could I do that's similar or that could extend what they're working on? Think a little bit about the methods. Um, and think about your toolkit and think about what you could do um, in your own paper. And then it has to interest you, right? It's not a doctoral dissertation. You don't have to live with this for two years. You have to live with it for about 15 weeks. 15 weeks. Um, the next step then, as you've heard, that's all great, but if you don't have data or you don't have a way to address these questions, it becomes, it becomes difficult. So if you don't have data, <laughs> start over or talk to, talk to us. Um, if you do have data or you've gone through this a couple of times, um, start formulating your questions and we start on that as part of our week one lecture, helping you turn your questions into researchable hypotheses. And then, as you've already heard, you want to start on the So I would just make a note on the data issue is I think often people think that data equals numbers and that you have to run a regression. You do not have to run a regression. Data are a lot of things. So data could be information from interviews. Data could be um, information from surveys that, you know, so that you can, you can do both qualitative or quantitative analysis in this one. And a lot of our program really prepares you to do quantitative analysis. Professor Clark next semester is offering a qualitative analysis class, and she's teaching that with the thought in mind that some of the people in her class will be doing an independent research paper. So if you are interested in doing qualitative analysis for the capstone and you have room in your schedule, I would consider highly recommend considering taking that class too. Um, so one difference in our class and their classes is that our reg registration cap is zero right now. And you have to get approved to get into our class. And we just want to make sure that you have a topic that's, that's doable. Right, so you need to send us a short email with your proposed topic, your preliminary research questions. You don't have to have refined hypotheses yet. Um, some data sources, as you've heard. We've done this enough times now. A lot of times, there's, there's a difference between saying, oh, I think there's this data set out there and actually having your fingers on the data set. And just a short preliminary reading list. And that may come from a paper you've already worked on in the class. And then if you could send an email to both of us with that information, then we'll provide you some feedback. Um, before doing that, you're welcome to talk to either of us um, about any. The other thing um, I would recommend doing, and there's information on the website that on the, we have handouts <coughs> predominantly because of this, we have an archive of previous year's papers on Carmen. It's, a, it's, it's the old Carmen, so you have to go to the distance to learn version of Carmen. And it's a different type of Carmen page. It's a self-enrollment page where you, here are the instructions on how to get there. And once you get there, voila, there are a bunch of the old papers there. And you and get a sense of what these, these papers look like. You'll, you'll notice some are really good papers, some aren't as good papers. Um, but you'll get a sense of the, of the different types of, of questions people have addressed and the way they've had them. Just you you can't take it. Oh, come on, <laughs> please. Um, just nuts and bolts about registration. So if you uh, speak with Professor Greenbaum and or Professor Kirchner, and they say, okay, you're ready to take the class, then what happens is um, they usually would send a quick email to me and Whitney, and then one of us, as soon as possible, whoever can get to it first will enroll you in the class. So that's how the end of that process works. And so our goal, there are, I mean, there are three classes, but in effect there are four classes since there are two of us. So our class will try to keep under about 30 students in Professor Shearheart and Dormady's class about 15 students will count them. These are smaller classes than some of the others you take in the program, and you get a little more attention in the class. Yes? I guess uh, of the capstones that have been done, do you feel like the qualitative individual research papers were, was there any, uh, were the qualitative stronger than the quantitative, or is there any, uh, I guess, pattern there in terms of how well the independent research? No, I think, I think at least in the ones that I've had, um, you know, the 
some of the qualitative ones have been very strong, some of the quantitative ones have been very strong. Um, you know, and there is equal amounts of work at different times. Qualitative can sometimes be yeah. more work because you're collecting primary data, and so that may be doing your own surveys or interviews, and that can, that can be time consuming. Very time consuming, yeah. And, you know, qualitative papers tend to be longer. Um, because there's more to describe, you know. You can't just say, in terms of methods, I ran a regression. You need to explain those methods so that they're reproducible for others. Um, so, certainly, I've noticed a lengthy difference. <coughs> yeah, Patty, are students creating their own surveys, the ones that use them, or questionnaires? Is that the requirement, or are they working off of data that already exists? Both. Okay, so either is acceptable. Either is acceptable. What's okay. more typical? Um, I think it's more typical to, st to start with data that already exists. Um, if you don't have, if, uh, if you're trying to do your own interviews or your own survey, um, come talk to one of us sooner rather than later. Don't wait till December 1st because you're going to need to get that, in that survey or that, that interview uh, material together. Um, and we'll also want to make sure that you have a reason to believe that people will respond to you. Um, and I guess we were going to say something about IRB. Yeah. Um, so many of you have heard of the I of IRB, which is the Institutional Review Board. This is the review board at the university that um, makes sure that people um, conduct their research in an academic and approved manner. The, cla the, class, the papers that you all are writing are exempt from the IRB process, unless if you expect that you are going to take this research and bring it with you to do something like publish, or if you're going to, you know, thinking about a PhD program um, and want to bring this into your dissertation work or something like that, if you think that you're going to use this, the data that you're collecting outside of this, the capstone experience, then you may need to go through IRB. So if you are thinking along those lines, um, again, please talk to us sooner rather than let me, let me add one caveat to that yeah. for IRB. Um, if what you're doing if for an educational purpose would get exempted from the IRB process, unless it involves sensitive subjects right. such as prisoners children. or children, children, so minors. If you're doing anything with education policy with kids in school and you're serving kids, talk to them. Yeah. And, and, that, and I should say education policy, and you're actually talking to the child. Not if you're using ODE um, data that's already been de-identified, and it's, you know they've got their public data, on, the public data on their website. You don't need to worry about IRB for that. One point for that too. If you've done your city training or haven't, I recommend taking off your certificate so you can feel ease your semester burden. If you have that training already done. That will be an assignment. Yes. If you don't know what that means, that's okay. Find out. <laughs> <laughs> <Soon> enough. <laughs> and so, there, so those of you interested in taking our class, the first important deadline is November first. So make sure you get your vote. December. December. December first. December. December. So good. Just testing you guys. Making sure you're listening. Um, and we're of course happy to talk about.